Hey everyone, it's Jonathan, and welcome back to the Disney Movie Marathon. Like I've been doing for the other episodes in this Fantasia miniseries, I'm going to leave the original audio intact as it aired back on my original podcast. Okay, let's get on with the show. Hey everyone, welcome back to the I Heart Podcast. My name is Jonathan North, and welcome to the third episode of my month-long celebration of Fantasia. This week, we're looking at some little-known shorts that all relate to the Fantasia franchise in some way, whether they were made for a Fantasia movie and then cut, or made for a potential sequel that never came to fruition. All of these shorts are in a similar vein to the segments featured in Fantasia and Fantasia 2000. Joining me for this episode is Rachel Wagner. She and I are both Disney fans, and we love classic Disney animation and classic Disney shorts, so I thought she'd be a great great co-host to bring on to talk about these five shorts. So to start with, why don't you just tell me a little bit about your thoughts about Fantasia and Fantasia 2000. Okay. Yeah. So Fantasia, I think is one of the great Disney films. I absolutely love each of the segments. I like how they each tell a different story and i like how it's a full and complete concert experience mm-hmm. if you were going to go to the symphony if you were going to go to an orchestra uh, you would have a similar sort of tones and feels and ebbs and i, I mean it really combines the best of art and the best of music into a uh, complete experience and it's completely unique uh, there's no other I I don't even think Fantasia 2000 is quite like it, but I guess Mm -hmm. there's basically no film quite like it. And I I just think it's a very, very special movie. Yeah, I really like all of the segments. And uh, I've liked it ever since I was little, even as a little girl. I I went to see it uh, at a a special theater here in Salt Lake. Uh, They had one of the re-releases and I really enjoyed it. And so I, I really love original fantasia fantasia 2000 i appreciate kind of the attempt and i think that it has some interesting stuff but Mm -hmm. i really really dislike the celebrity introductions i think it cheapens the whole experience and takes away kind of that the whole idea of it being a concert experience Mm -hmm. being uh, i i just really dislike all the terrible puns and the it's, it really makes a big difference to me on the quality of the experience. Yeah. Also, I I do I do wish that they had stuck with a hand drawn uh, or two D I should say animation as opposed to using the, the computer animation because it wasn't quite ready I don't think for some of the stuff that they were trying to do, which makes it feel a little dated to me. Whereas mm-hmm. the other one is just timeless. Like, for instance, I think the whales look really not great. Uh, and and if it wasn't for that sort of CG, if it, was in, if it was a 2D animation, it would look a million times better, in my opinion. And there's a couple of the, the one with the soldier. I don't think the CG animation looks that great. I, it was just a weird time in uh, 1999 for CG animation. Mm-hmm. and uh, i think it would be much better i think that the uh one with the the right uh, not right of spring but the with the fairy firebird sweet firebird yeah that's what I mean, firebird um that one is probably i think the one that holds up the best yeah i mean i think i also think it's sort of weird having the one with donald because they use I don't know the name of the song. Pomp and Circumstance, yeah. Yeah, it's sort of weird. It's sort of distracting because that that music is so, to me at least, so associated with graduation that it's a little distracting, I think. Yeah, some of the music choices are are a little strange i think in in it but it's cute enough uh the i do like when donald sees the ducks like regular ducks <laughs> that yeah. one's that's pretty meta and that's pretty fun it's not awful i don't hate it i just think it's a far far cry from the original in the experience in the terrible introductions in the music choices and in the use of the computer graphics just make it way less timeless in my opinion so mm-hmm. i i love the original i'm kind of meh on vintage 2000 yeah i'll have more thoughts on that when i do my review with sarah next week for that one but 
we're mostly on the same page. I, mm. I, I feel very similar to how you feel on most of that stuff. Mm. I think I've told you, though, I do like the whales. Even if it is flawed, I just there's something about that one that I just really like. Mm-hmm. Cool. So yeah. for these, I don't know what you, maybe you call them the lost Fantasia shorts. I don't know that there's like a collective name for this group, but had you been aware that any of these were out there? Did you know about these shorts? Uh, yeah, I... I had seen all of them before. I didn't realize that Lorenzo and Lebo M's were Fantasia related. I knew the little match girl. I knew Destino and I knew Claire de Lune. I knew those were all proposed Fantasia shorts, but Mm -hmm. I I must say I didn't know the others were, but I had seen them. Uh, So yeah, it was fun to, fun to rewatch them. Yes. I found out about them like a few years ago and then there was really no way for me to watch a couple of them so i've kind of been trying to track them down and i made a concerted effort when i decided to do this series of podcasts because i think most people probably don't really know about these shorts and i thought it'd be fun to introduce them to people Mm -hmm. because i don't think they're as good as fantasia but i like them Mm -hmm. so The first one we have is one that was actually cut out of the original Fantasia, just, I guess, for time. It was a segment based on Claire de Lune. They eventually reused it for a segment in Make My Music. So Mm -hmm. it it was cut, but it was used, but with with different different music. Yeah. So what did you think? I I guess I'll give a brief synopsis of what this is. It's really, there's no plot to this. It's basically an egret flying around. Or mm-hmm. that's about it. So what did yeah. you think of this scene or sequence, I guess? Yeah, I think that uh, it's much better with Claire de Lune than with Blue Bayou. That if That's what they have in Make My Music. Uh, mm-hmm. Just because I'm not that into singers like the Ken Darby singers was in the Blue Bayou. And I'm not really in that into that kind of style of like 1940s, I don't know, like the Andrews Sisters and the Ken Darby, like things like that isn't my favorite. Mm-hmm. Uh, kind of, So I just prefer the classical music personally. Uh, but it's not like a huge, you know, huge deal. It's, it's a really pretty, pleasant little short, relaxing. Uh, you can just see some nature and some pretty animation. So yeah, I enjoy it. Yeah, I really liked the animation. It felt similar to the original Fantasia, but to me it had not quite, but almost a Bambi vibe because of I can the, see that the nature aspects of the animation, the paintings and everything. And I, yeah, I can I see it music. kind of being like, um, drip drip drop little April shower yeah. kind of in that vein it would fit in there but overall i feel like if they're gonna cut something out of fantasia i'm glad they cut this one <laughs> because even though it was beautiful and the music was great it was still kind of boring to me mm-hmm. just nothing happened there's just the egret flying around there was cool animation and i enjoyed it for what it was but i don't feel like it really can compare with everything that was in Fantasia itself. Yeah, the the Fantasia they do a better job in each of those shorts of of telling a story. Yeah. Each of them. So I can see that. I, I you know, I mean I actually have a real soft spot for making my music. I just it's such a weird movie where they just literally took up all these uh it's, it's kind of a scrappy seconds mm-hmm. <laughs> kind of movie where they just took up all these projects that that had been started and then they fit it and they probably been stopped for a reason because they weren't that good but i don't know i just i find it this really eclectic very weird uh group of sort of experimental kind of movies and especially the willie the whale who wanted to sing at the met that's my particular favorite because it's just so weird uh Mm. but (laughs) i don't know so i i'm kind of glad that it could find its place in this yeah really weird package film that i kind of love so (laughs) make my music is actually one of a very small handful of disney films that i have not seen yet i've seen segments from it i've seen the whale that wanted to sing at the met (laughs) is it is very weird (laughs) and kind of in a light way very dark (laughs) yeah oh yeah yeah. (laughs) totally is (laughs) Uh, well, I, I I don't want to give any spoilers, but yeah, there's a point where you're just like, what? 
<laughs> yeah. What can I do? Oh my gosh. It's really, really bizarre. And I love it for that. And then there's Johnny Fedora and Alice Blue Bonnet. They fall, fall in love. That does have the Andrews sisters in it. But Casey a Bat, which is like so weird. It's basically just about this, this really, really horrible person. Like he's the worst. And uh, I don't know. It's just, it's a really eclectic experimental thing, which Disney doesn't mm-hmm. do experimental that much. And so I just kind of appreciate it for that reason. So, yeah. so it's one, if people ask me what's an underrated Disney film, I almost always go with make my music because mm-hmm. I just think it's, it's a fun it's a fun little entry. Blue Bayou is just kind of a, a classy entry in this weird uh, mm-hmm. movie. So I'm glad it kind of got saved for uh, Make My Music. Yeah, it's definitely worth watching. It's just compared to the rest of Fantasia, I did find it a little bit boring. But Yeah, that's fair. Like I said, it, was, it was still beautiful. It's also not that long. Yeah. So it kind of, it, I feel like the other ones in Fantasia, I don't know as a fact, but I feel like they're a little bit longer and more, there's just like more gravitas. So mm-hmm. I think it, it, it turned out for the best. It yeah. belong, it's good and make my music. It would have been one of the weaker ones in Fantasia for sure. Yeah. Okay. So the next one we have is Destino, which it was only recently made like in the last couple decades, but it's was started in 1945 by Disney, and weirdly enough, Salvador Dali, the surrealist artist, Mm. which I would have never thought of those two together. Like, Salvador Dali is somebody who's like, he's in the history books and in museums, and I never thought of him being a contemporary with Disney, let alone doing something together. Even though it totally could, they're in the same time period. I just, my mind never thought of those two worlds colliding. Really? Oh, I disagree. There are so much influence of Dolly in those films from the 40s in Disney. Almost every single one, especially something like El- Pink Elephants on Parade in Dumbo, for sure, is very Dolly-esque. There's actually, there's another, it's, I think it's in Make My Music. It might be Without You, I'm thinking, with the, sort of a melting clock, or it might be in Melody Time, and I think about it. Trees. This is the one I was thinking of. Trees is very Dolly esque in Melody Time. Just the whole style of it is very kind of surrealist kind of feel to it. Mm-hmm. And I don't know. You just see when I was doing my canon review, I I found myself saying, "Oh, they're influenced by Dolly. They're influenced by Dolly here." <laughs> but yeah, I think a lot of the Fantasia segments have a Dolly esque kind of influence in them, mm-hmm. and I think you can definitely see it in Pink Elephants on Parade for sure in Dumbo. I I think there's other shorts like in Melody Time with the trees shorts that has definitely sort of a melting modern aesthetic that you'd see in Dolly. Uh, so he was definitely a big influence on the animators of that period in the 1940s for sure. Yeah, I just had never really thought about the fact that they could have and did meet up so that was interesting to learn. I think I probably just discovered that when I got the Fantasia 2 movie collection back in 2010, Destino was a short on there, like as a bonus feature. But could you tell what the short was really supposed to be about? Can you like give your interpretation of what you think they were trying to say? Um, yeah, uh, it's, it's kind of reminded me of like a ballet of uh, women dancing. It, it, yeah, it kind of reminded me of a ballet of uh, this woman dancing, and uh, she has, I think, a a love that she can't be with, I think, is the main idea. Mm-hmm. It, it's not kind of meant to be. I didn't have a ton of story yeah. uh, in my memory. <laughs> I, I, don't, I don't think it really did either. I think the focus was mainly on how weird it could be. <laughs> I think it was mainly on just like the dancing and, and mm-hmm. capturing this idea of sort of loss and, and, uh, and sadness. And really making it feel like something that Dolly would have drawn. And there was a lot of stuff that he did draw and paint in there, like as background pieces, just all of his weird ideas, <laughs> just yeah. the strange surreal visions and things. There was, I couldn't really tell much of a plot beyond the woman looking for her lost love and having all sorts of weird things happen to her 
Yeah, ballet. it's it's more like a uh, a ballet. Yeah. I didn't think of it as a ballet, but I think that's probably the perfect way to describe it, just a surreal ballet. Mm-hmm. What did you think of the music? The music was written by Armando Dominguez and performed by Dora Luz, Luz I guess. And I think it might have been an old recording. It sounded like an old recording to me, like something that might have been maybe Disney and Dolly were actually planning on using this music. It sounded like something that would have been recorded in the 40s. Um, yeah, it was okay for me. I didn't feel like it 100% fit what was going on as far as the ballet. Uh, but it it was all right. It was pretty enough. Yeah, I actually really liked it. I thought it went well with the weirdness. Like, it it didn't fit. But because it didn't fit, I thought it fit perfectly. <laughs> just because it was already so weird. And I I just liked it. I thought it fit the weird vibe of it. What did you think yeah. of the animation overall? Because I know you had you said you had some issues with the 3D stuff in Fantasia 2000. And this had a lot of that mixed into here. Uh, yeah, I would have liked it way better in 2D. I just think that was a very weird time for CG animation. Mm-hmm. That even the best struggle a little bit to kind of hold up like i don't know it just looks kind of weird uh, and but it's it's fine i enjoyed it it was overall a a nice little piece of art work <laughs> i liked it well enough yeah i didn't have many complaints my biggest complaint i guess would be that some of the 2d animation was too kind of choppy it wasn't smooth, but it was it was intentionally not smooth. I'm not sure I really cared for that. It was fine, but I would have really liked it if it was like really smooth animation. Yeah, yeah. Like I said, it was just sort of a, a weird time of CG animation where they were trying, I think, too hard to make things realistic, but the technology wasn't there. And so it just makes, I don't know, it just makes it look kind of strange. Mm-hmm. But because this is uh you know very surrealist i'm more forgiving of yeah. it than like i said with the whales because it, to me it just looks less plastic like it looks okay that it's maybe a little plastic plasticky looking but yeah. uh, it's not trying to be realistic so it kind of adds to the experience a little bit if that makes sense mm-hmm. but um but yeah uh, i was just reading here that i guess this was released before the triplets of belleville which is a very surrealist movie and mm. uh, very Dolly esque inspired. Uh, so I think that's kind of interesting. I don't know how the makers of, of that little indie were able to get that from Disney, but that's kind of interesting. Yeah, that is interesting. Yeah. But I feel like that's a weird movie, so it kind of fits. <laughs> yeah, no, that's what I'm saying. Perfect. Fits. It really does. Perfect. Uh, so, <laughs> yeah, it's saying Justino was released theatrically in a very limited release with the animated film The Triplets of Belleville. So interesting. Yeah, cool. yeah. So yeah, I think it's a fun one. It's cool that Roy Disney like found it. Yes. <laughs> yeah, we're yeah. we're actually getting onto some more of those. He found some other ones. He must have found like a collection of unfinished shorts and decided some of them could be projects for the future. And that's such a cool idea. And I'm sure there's so many other projects that are just lying around the proverbial Disney vault. Yeah. I I wish someone would just find and work on because there was so many things that Walt Disney had planned or had drawn things for or just that time period there's I'm sure there's so many abandoned concepts that would make really good shorts or even maybe features. Mm-hmm. I've read about some that's just like, oh, I want that to be a thing. Yeah, and Roy, he was somebody who was really good about trying to save the kind of the legacy of some of these projects and also trying to steer the company, uh, trying to steer it in a direction where it was more in line with what he thought at least Walt would have liked, uh, you know, particularly in the, <laughs> in the 80s, kind of trying to dig out of that mess that they mm-hmm. were in. Him and Michael Eisner were trying to dig everything out of sort of the relative mess that Ron Miller left everything in. Uh, mm-hmm. And so it's, it's an interesting situation. So does he, he had these save Disney kind of, campaigns that he would do mm-hmm. uh, and uh, to try to get kind of back to where 
they once were, which I appreciate. Mm -hmm. Vantage 2000 was a big project for him and one that he yeah. really believed in. So Yeah, I'm, I'm still holding on to a sliver of hope that they will make another one someday. <laughs> It, you know, I think with Disney Plus, it's actually yeah. probably pretty likely. I wouldn't be surprised at all uh, now with Disney Plus. That would be such a perfect project for them to do for Disney Plus. Yeah, I I wouldn't be surprised a bit, especially with the Spark Shorts coming from mm, yeah. Pixar for the Walt Disney Animation Studios team to do a similar sort of project, but make it kind of a Fantasia theme. I could totally mm. see it happening for sure. Yeah, I would I would love that. Yeah, it would be really cool. I know a lot of people are, are just like, oh, Disney's taking over everything, and there's a place for that conversation. But I do think Disney Plus is going to maybe give the opportunity for, for us to get more of these sort of small projects that mm -hmm. maybe might have been harder uh, before because of theatrical releases and, and things like that. So Yeah, definitely. Well, like I was talking about a minute ago with abandoned projects, from what I've read about the proposed second Fantasia sequel. I think they were calling it Fantasia 2006 before it was canceled. Mm -hmm. A lot of it was going to be kind of world music more than just classical music, which was actually a concept that they had been working on years ago. I don't know if it was Walt Disney himself or I feel like it might have been like in the 80s, but there was a plan for a movie called Music Hana which would have been like a spiritual sequel to Fantasia, but feature songs from all over the world and stories from all over the world that would fit the music. And the three other shorts that we have here all kind of fit into that and would have been part of a world-flavored Fantasia sequel. So the first one we have is One by One, which would have been an African theme. The music is also the song One by One by Lebo M, who did the Circle of Life for Lion King. The music was actually cut from the original Lion King, and I think they put it into the stage musical eventually, but they still made a short around it, and I guess they released it as a bonus feature on like the Lion King 2 Simba's Pride, I think. But... Other than that, I don't think it's been released anywhere. This one is basically African music with a cute story about kids making and flying kites and really nice animation. I wish the version that I had seen had been, I mean, I found a like a bootleg copy on YouTube. <laughs> so I, w I want like an HD version. I'm hoping that this shows up on Disney Plus because a, a lot of these old shorts that aren't getting released anywhere would look amazing if you could stream them in HD. And this one, it would look so good. Mm -hmm. What did you yeah. think of this, this short? I really enjoyed this one. I really liked the music. Uh, it's very calming and peaceful. And I just enjoyed the artwork. And it doesn't have a ton of story, but mm -hmm. you know, I really liked it. I guess uh, you had said here in your summary that you gave me that this uh, became part of the Broadway musical. Mm -hmm. and I, I haven't seen the Broadway musical. I just read that it had been. Oh, okay. Yeah, the Broadway musical is incredible. I love it. And I thought it was a very calming, very cool little animated short. Yeah, I, I really enjoyed it. it. I feel like just the feel of this one, somehow, if possible, I feel like this setting could be a feature film. Maybe not this exact story, but the characters, you don't know anything about them, but they just have so much personality that I would just love to see them doing something. I don't know. Yeah. I just feel like this short could be expanded on. It would make a really good feature film. Yeah, I mean, it's just these kids that are flying kites in Africa, but... You know, I liked the character designs. And, yeah. I mean, I almost always love things that are sort of either flying or floating or that sort of mm -hmm. sensation in animation I love. And so, you know, these kites, I really, I thought that was very lovely. Yeah, it was uh, an enjoyable little short. Yeah, I, I, I like African music. It's just so different than anything we have in the U.S. It just... It has a flavor that you can't get around here. And I just, yeah. I love it whenever it's featured somewhere. And I just like the whole flavor of this short. It's just really fun and cool looking. Yeah. Yeah, I, I agree. It was really nice. So the next short would be, I, I guess, maybe a Spanish type short. It was a tango. I, I'm thinking tango is Spain. So this one is Lorenzo. And the music was Bordonio 
E900 by Juan Jose Mussolini and his Big Tango Orchestra. And this is another one that was started back in the 40s and was supposed to be a short back then, but it got set aside and forgot about it until it was resurrected by Roy. And basically this one is about a cat who is like a pampered house cat and it shows him eating shrimp while all these poor street cats are watching him with sad eyes <laughs> and he's sort of taunting them. And then this weird sphinx cat comes along. He's not like one of the hairless cats, but he's all black, but he sort of looks like that. And he, I guess, puts a curse on him and his tail comes to life and forces him to tango everywhere. And it's just such a weird, random idea for a short. And it all culminates in the Sphinx cat coming back at the end and telling him basically he's got to chop off his own tail to get rid of the curse. (laughs) And it's really, it's another thing that's like kind of super dark, but they did it in such a way that I kind of loved it. (laughs) Yeah. No, it was really fun. It's basically he ends up kind of chasing his own tail and trying to find all these ways to basically chop off his tail uh but he's sort of dancing at the same time with his tail and uh yeah i mean this is charming it's i didn't really take it as that dark i I guess maybe i don't know it's just it's just fun and uh and yeah the, the the various creative ways that they sort of anthropomorphized his tail was mm-hmm. a lot of fun i guess to me the dark thing is the fact that he has to basically chop off part of his own body yeah. <laughs> I have never enjoyed that as a plot point in anything. Like if I find out that's in a movie, there's like 99% chance I will not watch that movie because it's too disturbing to me. This seemed, this was different because I mean, it was dark, but they don't actually show the actual thing happening, even though you know it's happening and everything around it was just, charming and fun and really artistically cool yeah it was just it it was just a fun little animated short about i i took it more as just he's forced to dance with his tail that's Mm. how i kind of watched it more than and it is yeah and i think if it hadn't been that it would have been a whole lot darker but all the other stuff kind of offset what i saw as darkness Mm -hmm. so i loved it even though the, it culminates in him, in him having to chop off his own tail. <laughs> I guess when you have in animated comedies where you have like an anvil, you know, falling on a character or something mm-hmm. like that, yeah, that, you know, or them getting electrocuted or something like that, like it's just different than if it was if it was live action and you're actually yeah. like it's it's just more fun, more silly. Uh, but I really enjoyed this one. I thought it was. I loved all the way that he used sort of the color and texture and the lighting and all that stuff was sort of brought in. I thought it worked mm-hmm. really well. Yeah. And uh, yeah, the way it kind of felt like a chalk drawing too. Yeah. 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 And I, I thought that uh, it was just fun to see all the different ways that they amphomorphized the tail was really fun. Mm-hmm. And I, I also really liked the end with the cat, the Sphinx cat, the way his neck kind of was like stretching out it was really weird and almost creepy but in a fun way Mm. i I just really liked how weird it was yeah it was a lot of fun yeah then then the whole scene with when he has the knife and Mm -hmm. it's sort of like a a scene from a horror movie all of a sudden was was really good and they they timed it with the music very very well i that's what i said it's like it's dark but fun yeah <laughs> just, i really liked that creepy cat <laughs> yeah this, this one is probably in terms of just fun this is probably my favorite mm-hmm. i think so too and i i guess this was the first music he the the director he said mm-hmm. on the in the shorts compilation he said that he bought a ton of tango cds and this was the first song that he listened to and that was the one that he ended up using and it's actually from argentina uh the uh okay yeah the guy uh, juan jose mussolini is the name of the writer and yeah he's i guess he's from argentina yeah this one this one was really fun i really yeah. liked it it's a good one and then from really fun we go to really depressing <laughs> but 
I mean, some people don't find this one depressing. I don't know why, but The Little Match Girl. Yeah. So this is one, I'd heard the title of this, but I don't, I don't think I knew what the story was until I watched this short. And I watched this one because it was released as a bonus feature on The Little Mermaid like years ago. So that's uh-huh. when I first saw it. And I don't think I knew what I was expecting to watch when I watched this short. (laughs) Uh, Basically, this little girl is homeless and she freezes to death. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) It's like, I mean, the animation is beautiful. It's really moving. You see all these, like, I don't know if it's supposed to be flashbacks or her imagination of a better life. But... It's all her hallucinations as she's dying. <laughs> and Yeah, I mean, I don't know. I think there's a difference between something being sad and being depressing. I, to me, like this is a there's, you know, classic part of literature is is the sort of beautiful tragedy. Like tragedies mm-hmm. are part of, you know, an important part of literature. This would and, fit in that. Yeah. And I I I thought it even though it is sad i didn't think it was without hope and i think that that's when something to me at least gets depressing i guess uh, that's kind of true yeah. because i guess it's sort of implied that she goes to heaven in the end yeah but she still freezes to death <laughs> yeah <laughs> Which, um, I mean, it's not funny but like it kind of rips your heart out and i guess the the way i'm dealing with the feels is trying to make light of it i guess i don't know it's just like the end the end scene when you realize that this wasn't her grandmother finding her in the cold and bringing her into war it was her grandmother coming to take her to heaven it's like that scene like it legitimately gave me chills and even still did when i watched it again today it was like oh i can't i can't believe this (laughs) i mean yeah it is really beautiful but still is sad yeah i mean i i i i like a uh i can you know appreciate a sort of tragedy story like i mm-hmm. i think the idea is you're supposed to kind of think about the the people around you and how you can serve especially at christmas maybe that's part of the reason why i, I have a fondness for it is because uh i love christmas and i think stuff and uh and just the the hope that all these sort of memories kind of give her you know and then she ends up in this kind of better place and uh but yeah it's it's very sad and they do a good job evoking those feelings i think that Mm -hmm. the animation is beautiful in this i think it's uh, i think it's probably i don't know maybe the firebird suite i like a little bit better but from this era of these fantasia things i mean this Mm -hmm. is definitely one of the best there's no doubt yeah the the animation is like the best of that like right on the edge of end of the renaissance beginning of the post renaissance era it's like this is like some of the best that they put out in that time. It, the animation in this was beautiful. Mm-hmm. Well, and, and Disney did have a, you know, a long history for a long time of, of these sort of deeper, you know, helping kids sort of learn about loss and grief and, and mm-hmm. you know, these things. And I do appreciate it when, you know, that they do that, but yeah, I, uh, it's, it's, you know, it's an interesting little feature from Disney. So. Yeah. I think it would probably help if I had a, maybe known what was going to happen the first time I watched it. Oh, <laughs> like, really? If I had known that this was like a tragedy instead of, oh, look, she's finally, she's getting pulled out of the worm. Oh, what? She's dead? <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> I See, I knew it from the original story, so that's probably what helped. <laughs> yeah, probably. Yeah, this this one is really beautiful, but I think it would help to have some forewarning when you're watching it that this is not going to give you happy feels at the end. Yeah, that's fair. (laughs) But yeah, overall, even though it was really sad, I did enjoy this one, but not because I thought it was fun like the previous one. (laughs) It was just, it was enjoyable for the animation and the music, just being a beautiful short, but it's not one that I would watch all the time. No, I mean, I think uh, it would work Actually, I think if you watched all of these ones that we're talking about, it would be kind of a because when you're when you're crafting a an anthology, you want mm-hmm. all different tones and feels, and you don't want them to all just be the same. So I think yeah. it would actually 
these if you're watching all of these together i think this would be a, an important piece to kind of have in there to have one part that was a little bit one short that was a little bit sad mm -hmm. yeah i because i was thinking about that with putting this podcast episode together because i felt like these five shorts really feel like something that could work as a whole in the same way that the package films back in the day felt or even fantasia i mean this isn't quite as cohesive as fantasia but i feel like it's as cohesive or even more cohesive than fantasia 2000 because fantasia 2000 like you said with the intros really felt kind of chopped up and disjointed at some at times but like these, if you just put them together, I feel like they work really well as one solid viewing experience. Yeah, I agree. Okay, well, I guess that's all I've got for today. Thanks for joining me for doing this. I enjoyed watching these, and I'm, I'm hoping that I'm introducing them to somebody who may not have heard about them. I really enjoy Disney shorts, and I really like the shorts that have no dialogue. So these were like, they're all really good in their own ways. Yeah, I think so. I, you really get the creativity of the animators involved in these shorts, and they, they really can showcase music in a way that is uh, difficult to do in features. Uh, so mm -hmm. there's a lot of fun things about these shorts, for sure. Yeah. So this was a lot of fun. I'm really hoping that some something in this format will emerge from Disney+. Plus. That would just, it would make my year if there was something like this announced. <laughs> Yeah, I'm, I agree. Me too. So let's hope. <laughs> well, thanks for joining me. Do you want to tell people where they can find you? Yeah, you can find me at Rachel's Reviews all over social media and on iTunes and on YouTube and uh, also at the Hallmarkies podcast. Okay, well, thanks for joining me. And I think you will probably see Rachel again soon. I think we're going to do at least one or two other podcasts in the next month or two. So you can look forward to that and we'll see you next time. Bye. Thanks to Rachel for joining me for this episode. I'll have links to her social media and podcast in the description below. One thing that might be of interest to listeners is that Rachel recently spun off her Talking Disney series within her main podcast, and it's now its own show available on Anchor. I'll have a link to that below if you'd like to check that out. Next week will be the final episode in this series. My cousin Sarah will be joining me once more, and we'll be talking about the direct sequel to the original Fantasia, Fantasia 2000. I'm really excited to dive into this one, so come back next week for that. Thanks for listening.